Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee, and today I'm going to be taking a look at this pile of games here. I'm going to be doing something different, though. You already know from the description, the name of this video, that I think that these games are trash. Just terrible as board games. However, I'm going to be doing something different. I'm also going to be wearing a second hat. I will also, from time to time, doff the board game reviewer hat and don the hat of a Christian father who sees games like this and says, I wonder if there's any didactic value to these. I wonder if there's any reason why someone should purchase these to teach their children different things, like the parables of Jesus and, and the different animals in the Bible and such. And I'm going to discuss this to you as someone in kind of the key demographic. I have a child, age six, which is kind of the age on pretty much all of these boxes here. And I'm going to also discuss why these games don't work. If you don't want me to see, if, if you don't want to see me making fun of these games, for both of those reasons, gameplay-wise and education-wise, go ahead and turn off this video. I wouldn't recommend any of these. That's all you need to know. If you do want to see me, I'm going to jab some fun at these things. Go ahead and let's discuss this a little bit more. I'm going to analyze why, uh, and as well as probably yell at some of these games. So let's get it started. <laughs> talk about what a game is, right? I've seen a definition of games that I, th I find really instructive. Games are oftentimes activities that you take part in simply for the sake of performing that activity. And I think that's a fairly good description of games, right? We play tag. Why? There's no winner in tag. There's no ulterior motive. It is simply to, to have fun to uh, divert ourselves from other cares and stuff and play a game and, and be silly and enjoy the activity, enjoy the game itself. There's something that's called the didactic games which try to teach something, right? That's what I think that these games are trying to fall into when you read the instruction manuals. They talk about different points. So, um, you know, th this is what this card means. This is a different story from the Bible. I am a Christian myself. I'm a father, like as I said, of a kid right in this kind of target demographic. So I'm going to go through and show each game, and then I'm going to talk about it. So let's start off with this one up top. In Bible Animals, click, clack, match, you're going to roll five dice at a time and try to match symbols. If you roll frowny faces, you have to set them aside. If you ever roll three frowny faces, your turn ends. You choose a card that you want to put these symbols onto, as many as you can that match. So fish and cow. Now, I can choose to either end my turn or continue by rolling up to five dice in total. The, the frowny faces stay on the side. I've now rolled two frowny faces. I can now continue to, hey look, I scored this card. That's going to be worth five points because I matched up all of the symbols. These go away. I keep five points in front of me. I replace this with another card. And now I can choose to stop or keep going. If I keep going, I roll all the way up until I have five dice. Uh, I rolled a uh, third frowny face, so my turn's done. Then the next person goes, they'll grab five dice and roll, and then try to match stuff onto cards and earn those points. Or you can choose to stop before you have three frowny faces if you want, um, for reasons. Bible Animals Click Clack Match is awful, right? But it's also the least offensive, both in gameplay-wise and in terms of the, that, that didactic value I was telling you about. This is not pretending to be much. There are dice with animal faces. You can talk with your kid about what the dove means, or the lion, or the Daniel in the lion's den thing, uh, the, the sheep, right? Cow? Um, it, it explains why there's a cow in there, right? Gameplay-wise, terrible. It's just like overly simplified Elder Sign, or even a simplified Age of War, if you're familiar with that one. Go play those games. This one is not fun. You roll dice until you hit three frowny faces, you could roll them in your first roll, and then you're done. Or you could just kind of keep having luck and getting all of the cards. Terrible design, but also, like I said, the least offensive out of all of these. Let's go on to some worse ones. Here's the game of Parable Parade. It's going to come with these summary cards which explain the story of the different parables that Jesus told in the New Testament. And it comes with this main deck of cards which is actually printed out and cut on two different sized cards shuffled together as you can actually see on the camera. So on a turn you're gonna flip over cards. It's kind of a push your luck game. I got uh, one part of the parable of the lost sheep and I flip over another card. Hey, it's the lost coin. Uh, and if I can get all four cards of two different parable stories, then I lock those in and I win the game. Here's the Good Samaritan. I flip over another card. Hey, this is a kingdom card. I want to have multiple of these. And I flip over. Oh no, it's an oopsie card. This is I pushed my luck too far. 
I have to discard three kingdom cards if I have them. If I don't, then I have to discard um, uh, all of them or, or uh, and or parable cards. So then this one goes, uh, this one goes away. It gets discarded. The next player goes on their turn. They flip over. Oh no! It's an oopsie card. Their turn ends. It's back to me, and so I got. Uh, so I can just kind of keep going. I got kingdom cards. I got kingdom cards. I got uh, another part of the lost coin, and then I got um, the prodigal son. And then another one of the lost coin. And then, hey, I got four of the lost coins, so that's locked in. I'm halfway to victory. Uh, so I got another prodigal son. I got another kingdom card. 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 Uh, the talents. Um, so anyway, I'm good here because I have so many kingdom cards that even if I bust, I can't really lose the game, Good Samaritan. So anyway, uh, that's kind of how you play the game. Parable Parade, from a board game perspective, is terrible. It's absolutely awful because it's a push-your-luck game wherein a single card causes you to bust on your turn. There's no build-up, there's no tension whatsoever. You simply just keep flipping over cards, and worst of all, if you have a good selection of cards in front of you, you have no incentive to stop because you only have to get rid of three of those crown, those kingdom cards, uh, if you if you bust, and once you have a pile of them, you say, "Well, I will just keep flipping forever until I either have to stop by busting or win the game in a single turn." Awful. However, I do like the I do like the idea of the set collection of the different parables, uh, simply because the art in them kind of illustrates the story. There's four cards in each, and part one, two, three, and four. Not bad. However, why does discarding three different color kingdom cards allow me to steal the fourth part of the Lost Coin Parable or the Good Samaritan? There's nothing about this, you know, this, uh, this game-driven experience that helps me understand the parables better, and there's a complete dissonance between stealing and the story of the lost sheep. Here's the Good Shepherd, watch your sheep! This is a game where you have three cards in your hand and then you can play one per turn. Uh, if you don't like a card, you can just discard it and draw a new one, and that's your turn. Look, I got rid of a number one point sheep for a one point pasture, that's terrible. Uh, the next player is going to go then, and they have eight point and ten point pastures. Well, the thing is that they need to be able to play, uh, they need to be able to have a sheep in their hand, otherwise these aren't worth any points at the end of the game. So they can play a sparrow in front of me so that they can look at what cards are in my hand. Uh-oh, I've got lots of mean cards. Then they drop a new card at the end of their turn. Oh, look at this. Now, if the game were to end at this point, they would have 23 points, and I would have none. So I'm going to go ahead and play a mean card, like maybe the Stampede. I'm going to play the Stampede card, which makes them lose all three of their cards, and they draw up three. Oh, I'm going to draw my replacement card. Then they're going to draw three more. Hey look, they drew a card that's literally worth 99 plus 1 points. Get it? The parable of the 99 and the 1 sheep. So anyway, you just keep playing cards, stealing cards, or blocking cards if you have the shepherd to block the wolves. Uh, and you keep playing until someone, uh, until there are three sundown cards in like a lower player count game. Uh, and four sundown cards if they're a higher, higher player count game. And then you score at the end of the game if you have sheep and pastures. If you only have pastures, you don't score points. If you have the 99 plus 1 card, then why did you even play? Also, the game ends as soon as uh, a certain number of sundown cards have come out of the deck. And, oh no! The third sundown card is not until the very bottom chunk of the deck. This game will go on forever. The Good Shepherd Watch Your Sheep card game has a card that is worth a hundred points. That is enough to basically say, no, I will not play this one again. Coming down from that board game reviewer perspective, right, obviously the game is it's trash. It's trash. The idea that you can only score by having two different types, but there's a ton of different types of cards, the ones that you look at other people's hands, steal cards from them. There's a blocker card, the shepherd card, which protects your hand of cards, but only if other people play bad stuff against you. I understand the metaphor you're going for. Does your metaphor work that you are trying to have the best pasture and sheep and to be Christ-like, and to then attack and stampede other people's uh, dwellings and their farms. It doesn't work. Take that card games are a terrible mechanism through which to teach these types of values that you're trying to do. This is a gigantic pass for me on both board game and on teaching front. Here's Emoji Bible Stories card game, and yes, this is exactly what you think it is. I have a card here that says Jesus calms the storm, so I need to play cards that show emojis 
uh, in order to make my other players at the table guess what it is. So maybe I can play the boat one and like a prayer. Um, and I don't have anything else that really says like calming the storm. So like I'm done and I can draw replacement cards. Dagger, sleeping. So you can either guess on someone else's or you can start playing more cards or you can discard cards. So I could discard these six and draw up six more to see if I can get um, something more useful. You can also change out this story card if you hate it, if you just don't have cards that really work for it, but you can also ditch your entire hand of cards and draw a new one. That's that's the game. But also, uh, if you want, here's a very long rule book that has different, uh, there's four different variations to the game. You can just, you don't have to use these ones. You can use your cards to tell any story. Or you can just match and guess shapes and symbols. Uh, and just, that's that's the game. My thoughts on the emoji card game should be blatant at this point. Emojis will only tie to one, maybe two stories. There is no reason that you take turns in this game and not have the entire deck of cards and just play out pictures. It doesn't make any sense. It's a cooperative game with no tension. There's no, there's nothing in this game. There's just nothing to it. And then from the, from the education side of things, you're basically just teaching how to match an icon to a, to a biblical story. That's fine. That's okay at best. But it becomes an exercise in tedium and slow, slow burning, uh, non-rewarding patience. I don't think this is a good game. I played this with my six-year-old. Hey, by the way, she doesn't know who built the wall. You know, uh, uh, she doesn't know Nehemiah who built the walls. We read through the scriptures regularly and she's never going to guess Nehemiah building the walls of Israel. Through emojis, nonetheless. It's not a good formula. Here's Ends of the Earth. Each player is going to start in one of these starting spots, and they're dealt a uh, mission card, and so I have to travel all the way to Bora via tiles, and I have to collect all these things along the way. The other player has some sort of other thing that they're also trying to do. So on your turn, you will roll the die, and that'll tell you the number of actions you have on your turn. I'm not kidding. Uh, and so I, I can have three actions, so I can try to lay three tiles. I pull out this tile here, and I can lay it out somewhere to try and connect over towards Bora, but I also need to be able to grab these supplies along the way, represented by these tokens here. In the worst designed insert tray I've ever seen in my life, because the tiles stand up this tall, but the insert is not flush with the top, and so the tokens will just fly out everywhere. Uh, also, so hey, this tile, I can put it out here as one of my actions. You'll notice the symbol on here says, lose hammer. Hammer could be one of the symbols that somebody's going for. And if you pull out this tile, you make everybody lose a hammer. And then for my next action, I can pull out this one. Everybody loses a gas can. And then for my next action, I'm going to pull out this one here, which uh, has nothing, but it's a, a four-square open road. The next player then goes and rolls the die. They have four actions on their turn, or they might have had four actions, or they might have had uh, two actions and a shovel. You get a shovel token, and that lets you have an extra action at some point. And so you just keep drawing tiles. Hey, look, this one also makes people lose hammers. This one makes people lose shirts. This one makes people lose forks. Where's the good tiles? Uh, this one lets you... Tr travel somewhere. This one can give you a light bulb if you get it. And then you can also spend action points to move along the tiles and when you come across this space you get uh, one of those resources. Oh look, this person didn't even need light bulbs. Mission Ends of the Earth, which I just forgot has that terrible insert, so me turning it like this has just ruined the inside of it. This is the worst tiling game I've ever played. This is one of the worst board games that I've ever played. There's nothing fun about it. There is Take That, which is completely incidental. There's a variant mode in here where you can play it completely cooperatively, where all players have to reach their target space with the things that they need, which is really no different from playing it the competitive way, except you just have to make sure all players finish. This game is terrible. It doesn't have very good explanation of where the tiles go. You roll a die to see how many actions you have, which is absurd. From a teaching perspective, does this teach you anything about service missions, going out to other places and providing those people basic needs? No, it doesn't. It, it, it's a ripoff of Carcassonne or uh, Karuba. It's a, it's, it's a pale shadow of better games than it. The fact that this line has meeples in it shows me that the people who made this know a little bit about hobby board games, have played things like Karuba or Carcassonne, understand meeples, understand modern board game pieces, and have fallen 
prey to the traps that make other board games terrible and have put no effort into making this good at all. The fact that it tries to have an insert and then completely messes it up shows that there is some intent behind what's going on here, but the intent is not turning into reality. No one stopped him partway through developing this game and said it's not fun. It takes too long. Uh, there's no educational value to this. You're just kind of slapping the name of the Bible on, a, on an inferior product and marketing and pushing it out to people to buy. Here's Bible Match at Link It. So this is the worst cover I've ever seen. And so basically you'll take two of these tiles, you'll flip them over, and each tile will have a bunch of symbols on them. And there will only be one matching symbol between the two of these here in this case. Uh, the first person to call out, hey, it's the boy, uh, they, they win the round and they get these. And then you flip over two more and then you say, um, the one that's matching is this, this person, this thing over here. Cool, got it. And so then you just keep, you keep playing until some point. It does have a guide here to what all the different pictures are or what they like represent. So, you know, that's something. Uh, and then it also has these meeples over here because there's one variation, well, that, sorry, there's actually a bunch of variations, another one of these rule books where there's like five different variations of how to play the game. Uh, let me show you what that last variation that actually works. In this variation here, you have uh, 25 of these tiles out in the grid, and you're trying to be the first person to make four connections in a row, uh, and you indicate that by use of the meeples. So you flip over one of these tiles here, and someone is looking to match any one of these pictures onto any one of these spaces. So someone says, uh, tiger, right? Boom, so the yellow player called tiger, they get to put their thing out. And then you flip over the next one, and then it's just a free-for-all race again. Someone says, uh, angel, pointing upwards thing. And so the blue player gets to put their thing there. And so basically you just keep doing this until eventually someone will be able to get four of their pieces in a row. However, if you run out of pieces, when you match things, let's say yellow has this one here, 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 uh, and then over here, the next time that the yellow player makes a match, they have to call something out, uh, um, uh, wine, a glass, glass of wine. They have to move one of the pieces from off the board onto the space where they call it out. And so that's just a small little tactical thing where you're trying to, you're trying to block people and then you're trying to not have to move out of the way so that people can get it open. And that's actually an interesting one. Bible Match Link it where my thoughts are most complex on this issue. I believe that in the Judeo-Christian theology, generally speaking, it is frowned upon to steal because this is clearly spotted, or for the chronically British, Dovel. This is blatantly another game with worse art put on top of it. I, I, I really can't respect that. I cannot appreciate that. Also, yeah, the, the art is, is terrible. Um, it has no educational value. Just because there's a sign that says Babylon or a picture of a whale doesn't make this any more educational than Frozen spot it. The fact that you can play it as dominoes is also horrendous. I do like that grid, that grid mode, the, the five by five tiles and you're laying out your meeples on there trying to make four in a row. That is the first thing I think I've seen in here that feels innovative. It's not a ripoff of a design and it's not a worse version of something that already exists. It actually felt fresh and interesting. Now I'm sure that someone might actually tell me that maybe there's already a, a spotted rule that has that. If not, then kudos for that creativity because I liked playing that game mode, but I cannot in good conscience support this company. And I'm going to talk about not just from the game perspective reason why. Is it possible that they came up with this idea independent of Spot It? Maybe. But I'm going to talk now. I'm going to change hats, right? I'm not going to be reviewing these as games anymore, but I'm going to be reviewing them as Christian products. And I'm going to say why I, I greatly dislike this line. As a, as a father of, of a kid who might look at this in a, in a store somewhere and say, hey, what's that? I like board games. Why don't we get a board game like this? I, I can't respect it because it feels like you've made a, a, a shabby product and you've, and you've put a sticker on there or you've put a little uh, visage of, of the Bible and said, this will sell. This will sell to families who are trying to look for something wholesome and good and uplifting. And none of these really are. Plenty of board games are wholesome and fun and uplifting and create good, strong family bonds. That's part of the reason that I love this hobby so much is because it has given me great, amazing experiences with my family. None of which has to have 
the the appearance, the the slapped on appearance of virtue and 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 righteousness. It's okay to just enjoy things like Carcassonne. A company many years ago came out with a version of Carcassonne called Ark of the Covenant, in which it was Carcassonne. They had it licensed. It was Carcassonne, but then it had some, you know, some little mechanisms thrown in about, you know, uh, Israel moving the covenant around the board. You know, you can say what you will about that, but they went through the right channels to get that game licensed. Uh, there's a version of uh, Settlers of Catan called the Settlers of Zarahemla that, that Wendy grew up with. And that's a very similar story. We like to oftentimes try to take something that's good and kind of put it into uh, an image that works well in our faith tradition. But when you have something like this that I feel like is not well made, not has the license or the rights to use spot it, uh, that to me is not a good look. Of, of Christianity. It, it makes it reflect actually kind of, kind of negatively. It looks like you're making bad products to sell because you know that someone's going to say, hey look, this is what we can do for family night. Finally, a game that appeals to our faith and our values. And then it's a take that card game that's mean, that is uh, not well designed, will possibly turn people off from playing more board games in the future or from coming back to, or from coming back to the table and playing more and sharing experiences, that to me is valueless. It's okay to play a game that doesn't have that thing stickered onto it and it will end up being a better and more uplifting experience overall. That's why I cannot recommend any of these. I really do not. So, uh, there you go. Also the terrible game. So that is my thoughts on all of these. My name is Chris Yee from the Dice Tower. Thank you for coming here. Let me know. Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe there's some value that I'm not seeing in it. Feel free to discuss it, but let's keep all the conversations civil towards each other and also towards me. So anyway, until next time, have yourselves a great day.